he was just acting so erratic and like strange because here's the best part. We have a picture of the person's car and he took it. Hello friends, I realize I look crazy. I wanted to wear makeup for this video and then I was like, I don't have time to put on makeup for this video. So let's do a get ready with me. My car got broken into and I lost everything. Unfortunately, that is not clickbait. That is the God's honest truth. So I'm gonna tell you the story. My diaper bag got stolen. And if you guys have watched any of my diaper bag videos, then you know that my diaper bag doubles as my purse and I lost everything. If you're interested in that story, in what happened, saw the person who did it, got a picture of their car, didn't see them doing it. It's a long story, you'll see. I debated if I was gonna even tell this story. Just keep watching if you're interested. <laughs> Where do I even begin? A couple weeks ago, it was gorgeous in Las Vegas. It was almost 70 degrees. It was a Sunday and Monday was a holiday. That was the problem. On Sunday mornings, he goes with one of his friends and they do their long runs, hikes, like runs up the mountains, stuff like that. So they had gone up the mountain and I haven't been up a mountain in a really long time. He's like, what do you want to do this afternoon? And I said, I really, really want to do something outside because it's just so gorgeous out. Why don't we go for a hike? I'm kind of jealous you went up the mountain, but if you want to go up again, it's totally up to you. He's like, absolutely. So I gave him two spots. I'm like, we could either do this one four mile hike around the base of the mountain. And it's kind of up and down, but it's not that bad. So it would be longer, but less intense. Or we could do straight up that mountain and it could be less time but way more intense and less distance. So he chose the more intense one, of course he did. And did I even need to tell you that? We needed to stop home. I needed to go to the bathroom. We needed to grab a snack and grab the carrier to put CJ in. Adam was rushing. He was kind of in a, we can't waste any time mood. I'm always a slow poke, don't rush me type of situation. So I was like, edgy that day, right? I was like, I know I need to hurry up. We had something to do afterwards. I don't remember what it was, but he's like, we don't have much time at home. Can we get in and out in like 15 or 20 minutes? And I said, yes. So ate really quick, got back in the car and I was like, oh no. And he goes, what? I'm like, oh, it's no big deal. I'm not wearing the right shoes to go up the mountain. Cause if you don't wear the right shoes to go up the mountain, it gets a little slippery. So I was wearing my Nikes that I work out in not up a mountain. And I said, it's nobody, y'all, I'll be fine. And he's like, no, go change your shoes. It's fine. I ran inside. I did not even put my shoes on. I grabbed my shoes. I'm telling you the specifics for a reason. I grabbed my shoes and I ran out to the car with my socks on and I put my shoes on in the car. Had I waited the five minutes, not even, had I waited the couple of minutes to put on my shoes in the house, this situation never would have happened. It was totally a wrong place, wrong time situation. But I lost all my cards and everything. So I went to Costco to get my card replaced after everything got stolen. We'll get to that in a minute. And I told the guy, I'm like, it's a total wrong place, wrong time situation. And he was like, but isn't that always when something gets stolen and your car gets broken into? Isn't that always wrong place, wrong time? And I'm like, yeah, but I'm, yes to him, but to you guys, I feel like I always find the need to justify that this didn't happen because of YouTube. It didn't happen because I did a what's in my diaper bag. It didn't happen because I did a follow up what's in my diaper bag with Adam. Had nothing to do with putting my stuff out there online, nothing. This was 100% wrong place, wrong time. So should have waited to put on my shoes, but in hindsight, how would you have known? Put my shoes on in the car. We get to where we're going, we park. Adam was starting to put CJ in the carrier. He was by the trunk of the car. He had the trunk open and I walked over and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. CJ looks so cute, like we need a picture. So he goes to take a selfie of the three of us. This guy is walking to his car next to us. It was him and it was another adult, another man, and the guy that was talking to us, his child. The guy says, do you need me to take a picture for you? If it were me, I would have been like, oh no, we're okay, because he had just gotten the picture. But Adam's like, yeah, sure, you know, you, you wanna be polite, right? Everybody has like this, this hiker etiquette here. It's kind of cool. So the guy says, do you want me to take your picture for you? Adam's like, yeah. I was wearing big sunglasses, a baseball cap, because my roots were really gray, and a hoodie. My face is pretty covered. All you could see is like here. So the guy takes Adam's camera. It's me, Adam, and he's hold Adam's holding CJ. He goes to take the picture and he's like really aggressive. He's like, 
bro, shut the trunk. What are you thinking? Right? Really aggressive. Like, come on, man. Adam didn't think it was that bad, but I thought it was kind of aggressive. So I love to make jokes, making light of a situation. And I said, oh my gosh, I'm like, you're hired. You're taking this so seriously. We all kind of got a giggle out of it. Took the picture. You know when you just know something's off? In my big sunglasses, make eye contact with the guy. And you know when like you have that split second moment of eye contact with somebody and it's like a pause, but it's like a split second, but it's an uncomfortable pause. That's what it was with this guy. It was just a split second. It was in my head, it like it felt awkward. I don't know. I thought maybe he was trying to figure out what I look like. I have no idea. I have no idea if I said something that was insulting, but it was that flash split second. He gives Adam back the camera. We thanked him. I think I might've said at that point again, great picture. You're again, you're hired. This is great. I don't know what else was said. I remember getting CJ into the front carrier for Adam. It was one of the first times that we had CJ facing forward. And there's this net that goes over the front of it. If the baby's inward facing to cover their head. So I guess for when the baby's younger, so they don't get sunburned to keep their head in place. But CJ's facing outward now. He's bigger enough and old enough. And so I found a pocket right here that the net kind of folded up and went into that I had never seen before. And I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Check this out. That's the gist of the conversation that I remember standing at the trunk. This guy's parked next to us. CJ's on the front and usually he brings a backpack with him with bottles of water. I said to Adam, I'll carry the backpack. Like, I want to make this more of a workout. He's like, are you sure? And I said, yeah. I put the backpack on and we start walking away. I said to Adam, did you lock the doors? And I think I said, I think so, but it can't hurt to double check. And we clicked it again. The door made the locking sound again and we go off on our merry way. We went up this mountain fast. There was no stops, nothing. To the point where Adam would be like, I don't know, 10 feet in front of me and I would have to stop, catch my breath and then keep going. Got to the top of the mountain, sat there for maybe five minutes. We met this guy with a drone who wound up, Adam started talking to him for a couple minutes. He took some footage of us, very brief. He sent us the video. It's like 30 seconds. It's not a long video. And then, so he was talking to us up this side of the mountain. Over this side of the mountain comes this other really, really friendly guy. His wife's pregnant. He's talking because CJ being there, his wife goes to the same doctor who delivered CJ, spoke to him for a couple minutes, headed back down the mountain. The whole entire time we were gone was an hour max. No for a fact, because we had that picture on our phone that the guy took for us at the trunk. Okay, so we got back down to the car and I was like, oh my God. In my head, I'm like, how the hell did he park here? There was so much glass on the floor. Like, why did he park on all this glass? Idiot in my head. So I was like, oh my God, you have to be careful when you're backing up. There's glass all over the place. I'm coming around the car looking at the floor. He goes, oh my God, it's the window. So I looked over and I was like, I said a bad word and I was like, my diaper bag. And I looked in and my diaper bag was gone. Now, before anybody says anything about leaving the diaper bag in the car, always, always, we don't leave a bag in there or we will put it in the trunk. We'll never do it again. I will never leave a bag in my car again. But I asked Adam, like, should I put this in the trunk? And he's like, no, he's like, it's the middle of the afternoon. There were at least 50 cars there. It's not even close to getting dark. It was like one o'clock in the afternoon. There were people all over the place. Nobody thought that there was any need to be discreet about anything like anyone's breaking into anybody's car. The last thing on your mind, especially hiking a mountain, that's whatever. Bad judgment, should not have left the diaper bag where it could be seen but at the same time Adam felt bad because he was like I was the one that told you not to move it it doesn't matter Adam was pissed I totally you guys mom brain is real not sleeping destroys your brain I totally forgot about the guy that took our picture an hour ago he's like you have to call the police and you have to get your credit cards canceled immediately like your bank card card and your credit card I'll be right back. And he, he walks away to go look for where the, they probably ditched the bag. So he's like walking all over the place. He comes back and he's like, you have to cancel those credit cards. I will call the police. He's livid. I'm just kind of shaken. I was like, I'm not even mad about it. More than anything, I was upset about the sentimental stuff that was in my wallet, like mass cards from family members' funerals. Side note, I still have one of my moms in my car. They didn't take anything else from the car, by the way. They just bashed the window, grabbed a bag from the floor and left. There were like sunglasses, there was cash, there was tons of other stuff that they could have taken that will never be in my car again, by the way. This was just, Adam said, it felt personal. 
And that's why I was so specific about what we were saying, where we were standing, clicking the door. He's like, this was personal. For some reason, we said something or did something that bothered that man, whether that was like I said that you're hired and he found that to be insulting, whether it was that split second exchange that he thought something, whether it be I said to Adam, did you lock the car? And we relocked it. Maybe he found that offensive. Maybe it was nothing. Maybe it was the way we looked. Maybe it was the fact that we had a baby. Maybe who knows? You don't know. Like Adam said, he's like, people are just crazy. There are just people that are crazy. We obviously did said something. He took the wrong way. I'm on the phone with the police. Adam's like, all right, get in the car. And I was like, we can't get in the car. There's glass everywhere. I'm not putting the baby in the car. I've had my windows shattered before by kids that were just playing with baseball bats, didn't even break into the car. When you're driving, glass flies as well as you clean it out in the moment before you have a vacuum. I'm not thinking, I'm like, I'll take the stroller and I'll walk the baby home. And you drive the car home. And he's like, no. At first he's like, we have to go in the car. And then it registered when he looked in and there was glass all over the place. He was like, you stay here with the baby, put the baby in the stroller. I'm like, I don't even have a blanket. At this point it's getting cold because the sun's starting to set. We took a towel that we had in the trunk, used that as a blanket for the baby. I'm on the phone, canceling credit cards, calling the police because I have to make an accident report. Side note, I always think it needs to be said, people ratting and not calling the police and not cooperating with the government. If you are not part of criminal life, then that does not affect you. Adam was the one that said, call the police. We're not in that life anymore. Or not we, I never was, but you understand what I mean. If something happens, call the police if you need help. You're not a rat, you're not a traitor, you're not, call the police. Anyway, so Adam goes home and he gets, he drops off my car. He gets his car. Instead of doing what we had planned to do the rest of the day, which honestly at this point, I don't remember what that was. We proceeded to drive around for about two hours looking for the bag. I was like, listen, I don't think that they cared where they dropped this bag because he was looking in parks and in dumpsters. I'm like, obviously they cared so little that they broke into my car in the middle of a park in the middle of the afternoon. They probably went through it, got the wallet, got whatever they wanted. And if they did, it, they ditched it right out the side of the car. I don't think that they thought twice about this. I don't. He was just being so sweet to me. He's like, do you want to keep looking? And I was like, no, if we haven't found it yet. I was like, we're not finding it. And that's fine. More than anything, I just wanted my stuff. Like my social security card was in there. I just wanted my stuff, my personal stuff. I didn't care about everything I lost. It's just stuff. I just wanted the stuff that made me feel violated. And I wanted more than anything else my sentimental stuff. I had the card in there. Hang on one sec. I had a vision card that Adam had sent to me years ago, 2016, that he kept in his pocket for years when he was inside. It was like a positive affirmation thing. I can't think of the word, but a lot of it came true. And he sent it to me as a birthday gift one time. Children, beach visits, things started to come true. And I kept it for years. It was like one of my prized possessions that was in there, that's gone forever. So just that kind of stuff. The diaper bag stuff, it's stuff and it sucks. And like I lost a pair of designer sunglasses and my wallet that I love, but I can't repurchase. That's fine. It stunk in the moment. I did not get emotional about it. That's fine. Ever since then, I always look on the side of the road for my bag. It's gone forever. It is what it is. I've replaced everything. I have monitoring set up on my credit. My bank will call me anytime that a purchase is made. Anytime somebody goes into the bank, everything is on serious lockdown. I'm getting my IDs back. Everything's fine. The glass was replaced the next day. Well, the next day was a holiday. So the following day, and my insurance covered it. That's all fine. But I loved my diaper bag. And I told Adam this, the diaper bag wasn't designer. It was a nice diaper bag. It wasn't like a diaper bag. It was a leather bag. And I put a strap around it that was designer inspired. So it could have maybe looked like a designer bag from far away. When I got home or like in the midst of all this at some point, hi baby. I emailed Miss Fong that the diaper bag was from. And I was like, my diaper bag got stolen. I loved that bag. I am heartbroken. Can we do another collaboration? And they were like, absolutely. With Didn't even miss a beat. They were like, do you like this bag? I actually like it even more than the one I have because I feel like, yes, it's a diaper bag. Hi. And it has so many compartments and it's got insulated pockets for the bottles, but also I can use it in the future as a travel bag after I have baby and insulated pockets are great for water bottles and snacks for baby and mommy and daddy, right? I'm super excited about that. I'm gonna show you guys the bag. I am totally downsizing my diaper bag. I'll do another video if you guys want about that, but I put a quarter of the stuff that I had in there. I don't keep it as a wallet. 
I don't keep a, keep it as a wallet. What does that mean? I don't keep it as a purse anymore. I do not keep my wallet in there. I keep a very cheap pair, $9 sunglasses from Walmart in there. That's just how it is. And I had to learn my lesson the hard way. That's life, right? I keep just telling myself somebody needed that diaper bag more than me. Adam's like, good try, but that was not an act of desperation because here's the best part. We have a picture of the person's car and he took it. He was just acting so erratic and strange. It's just weird, right? But we didn't get the license plate number and I can't prove that he did that. I just, in my gut, know. If anybody broke into my car at the mountain that day, 50 people, 50 cars, not one car got broken into. All of them were fine. No other glass in the driveway. Clearly it was that person and clearly we insulted them and whatever you took the wrong way, I apologize for. If some way, somehow you're watching this, I hope not. Yuck. Like you just feel so violated for days. Even that night going to bed, I'm like, are the windows all locked? And it's fine. Right, CJ? Right, Bubba? You're so tired. I'm gonna go finish my makeup because we're going to dinner tonight and do my hair. Get this little guy ready. What do you think, see? Oh, mama's boy. We love you guys so much. Say bye. And we'll see you in the next one. If you did not check out Miss Fong and you need a bag or a diaper bag, go do that. Hi. Not only did I love the diaper bag and the company's story to begin with, just the fact that as a fellow mom, she came back and she was like, I'm so sorry. Absolutely, we'll work with you again. Here is another diaper bag for you. Just melted me. I will be a supporter and a fan of theirs forever. Go check them out. All the information is in the description, in the description box below. I will leave any coupon codes or anything like that. Love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.